So welcome everybody to my edition of Noon Hour Slides. Uh, it was through some prodding but, uh, by my mom and Vincent asked if I would do a presentation on my really recent trip to Belize. Um, my husband and I started planning this trip in September. Well, actually I, I started planning it <laughs> in uh, September or October. And um, Belize was uh, a place that he wanted to go to. Um, I always want to travel, so I don't care where I'm going. Um, I just want to travel, especially in the winter time. In the in uh, the particular months, we're looking at December uh, to January. Uh, it's kind of the off season for my programming, so it's a perfect opportunity for me. So as I mentioned, I started planning this for um, for my husband and I. Uh, in September uh, in um, 2019 was a, the last time we had traveled just before COVID shut everything down. We were in Jamaica and it was uh, then that. Um, so I knew nothing about Belize, um, despite the fact that my husband wanted to go there. Um, Belize was lifting some of, a lot of the COVID um, rules and restrictions to go into the country. So uh, we felt comfortable in going to a country where there wasn't a lot of restrictions on us. Um, so, so that's why we selected Belize. Uh, now I'll move on. And uh, this image is um, some of these uh, larger than life sculptures that you see um, um, throughout Belize. Um, they're very good photo opportunities. And um, and I thought I'd start with this one because it's all so bright and colorful. And it definitely represents Belize. This is in Belize City. Uh, that was our last day. So um, we're going to move on to um, facts that I learned about Belize when I started researching. Um, it was known as British Honduras up until 1973. And then it became totally independent of British rule. Uh, that's th That was kind of nice for us because English was... Um, the, the language that everybody spoke there, uh, the water was clean, um, and it's a little bit different than going to a Spanish country. So the population is very small. Um, if we look at it, um, uh, 412,000 people, uh, land size is uh, 22. Oh. <laughs> so um, other interesting facts that I learned about Belize was uh, they have a huge uh, barrier reef reserve um, and a UNESCO site um, that was founded in 1996. Uh, what I didn't also realize, I, I knew about the Mexican Mayan um, ruins, but I didn't know how many, uh, there's an amazing amount of ruins in Belize. Uh, half of them haven't even been discovered or they're still in mounds. So there's over 900 plus and they're in the middle of jungle. So uh, I, I've always, I've seen one in, um, uh, down at the bottom in the um, Mayan Riviera area, but I, I didn't realize how many there were in this area. Um, so the, the currency is in Belizean dollars. Um, although US dollars was widely accepted, what and it is always two to one. They don't um, um, modify it according to the banking system. It's always two to one. What I was thought was surprising, I went to my bank here and I asked them for Belizean dollars and they looked at me we don't we don't take it we don't we, we don't exchange it here what so it's a, a currency kind of like the cuban um money system where you have to go down there and exchange it but you can't use canadian dollars you have to use us dollars so um the way that we got around that was we just used our debit and credit cards um they translate easily um with the debit machines um in a store um but you do have to get cash um, when you're dealing with um, some of the little local stores um, um, and the markets. Um, another interesting fact is about the food. I'm a food lover. Uh, I didn't realize how much uh, variety there was. Uh, French, uh, Spanish, American, Caribbean, and Mexican influence uh, were some of the things that we noticed. Uh, when we uh, went out for dining, um, 
English uh, is 90% of the population and Spanish, Creole, uh, Mayan languages are also spoken there and they're different dialects. Uh, uh, so um, they're encouraging um, different um, um, Mayan languages as well. So this is a ceviche dish that um, we had here. How did we get there? Um, that was the next part of my research. Um, the easiest way, avoiding Toronto Airport. <laughs> so there's a direct flight. WestJet flies directly um, to Belize City. Uh, it took uh, six hours from Calgary. Uh, we um, played it safe and we spent uh, overnight in the Calgary area. So um, we didn't have to worry about the um, snowstorms that Regina gets. Um, although it was a little hairy um, leaving Moose Jaw to go on the highway to Regina the night uh, or the morning. No, it, we had a late flight. It was 10 o'clock at night. So we were leaving Regina after I finished work and it was icy and there's people in the ditch. So that was kind of the, the most stressful um, time that we had getting to uh, Calgary. Uh, but once we got to Calgary, it was, everything was fine. Uh, now we had another couple that joined us and they went first thing in the morning uh, from Regina to Calgary. And then they caught, they had about two hours to catch the connector to Belize City with us. So uh, I, I usually like that option, but during uh, winter time season, it's a little tricky. So we, we uh, did that on the way there and the way back. We spent a night in Calgary. Um, so from Belize City, it is a hub and you can go to places like Panama City, you can go to the little islands um, in that area. And in our case, we were going to Key Cocker, which is a very nice little island. We went there for 10 days. Um, you could either take a water taxi, which takes 45 minutes, but they stop at a certain time of the day. Um, if you miss the last one, then you're um, stuck overnight in Belize City, and you don't want to be stuck overnight in Belize City. Um, so we opted into uh, flying a 15-minute flight right from the airport. Uh, we took Tropic Air uh, from Belize City to, to Key Cocker and then took a little golf cart to where we were staying that night. So here is um, uh, the direct cities uh, that you can uh, go to Belize City in. There's 19 cities across the US uh, and uh, Calgary, um, interestingly. I think there must be some, um, there is some Toronto connections. This is probably an old map, but you can kind of see where Belize is in relationship um, to uh, the Caribbean islands. Uh, we'll get a little bit better look at that when we move on here. Uh, so fun in the sun with friends um, in travel. Um, this couple, Joanne and Clark, uh, we've uh, traveled several times with them. Uh, in 2019, they were with us uh, in Jamaica at Negril. Um, so this is their first big trip uh, since uh, COVID started. And uh, we love traveling together. We have lots of fun. And uh, uh, Joanne, she loves to, um, uh, she's a water person and she likes to snorkel. So. Uh, we ended up doing a, a snorkel trip with her. Okay, so this was, we went for 21 days and um, we started out, uh, we flew into Belize City. Uh, we uh, then flew into Key Cocker. Uh, we spent 10 days there, but then we took a one day getaway to um, San Pedro, which is uh, the island above it. Uh, then went back to Key Cocker and then headed back into Belize City where we took uh, we rented a car and became a little bit more adventurous. Uh, we drove down to uh, Pineapple Hill. You can see it uh, right down um, by the Blue Bowl here in National Park. And then, um, and then we went into San Ignacio uh, for the last part and then back to Belize City for a couple of days before our flight home. Uh, so day one to 10 itinerary. Uh, this is a little map of Key Cocker. Uh, there's 450 keys, they call them, uh, small islands that are off the coast of uh, Belize, the mainland. Um, this little island and um, San Pedro are hubs for snorkeling and scuba diving. So you see lots of people um, doing that. Um, and you can see the um, barrier reef is right here. So uh, it's very protective of uh, all the islands that are around here. Um, it's a, um, Key Cocker is the second largest island in Belize with about um, 1,300 uh, residents. 
uh, the early history. Uh, it was a popular stop for sailors as it was accessible to fresh water here. Um, as well, it's a little uh, fishing village. Um, and before 1964, um, yeah, mainly uh, fishing and coconuts um, are what it was known for. Um, there, there is a split on the north side of the island. Um, I, I've seen a couple of versions. Um, someone said, or oh, the myth is that um, um, Hurricane Hattie um, created this um, segue between the, um, and, and split the island into two. Um, but um, this version says it um, separates it because it makes it easier for fishermen to um, go back and forth to the, the fuel depot on the other side of the island. Uh, there was a lot of, um, of um, tours that stopped at the split from other islands and uh, it's kind of a party hub. People um, like to hang out there during the day, restaurants and um, uh, fancy drinks, which you'll see a little bit of. So um, Key Cocker is a go slow kind of island. You see the Key Cocker go slow sign is everywhere on the island. Uh, so the only modes of transportation are golf carts, bicycles, and walking. Uh, I've seen one or two vehicles, um, but they were part of the energy um, corporation there. So not um, many of that. Now, when we left Keith Parker on our way back, it rained, and you can see the um, the, the streets are sand. Uh, when that gets wet, um, your clothing gets covered in a white powder dust because of the, the puddles that it creates. Uh, now, the, um, what's unique about this island is the ocean is on the west and the east side, which makes both sunrise and sunsets fantastic and accessible by walking from one side to the other. So you can watch the sunrise, have your coffee, and then at the end of the day, you can go to the other side and watch the beautiful sunset. So you'll see some of that here. We stayed at a little place called Moe's Cozy Cabana. Um, there's three other cabana sites um, located on the site. Um, it was just uh, nice. It was small enough for two people. Uh, we had our own little kitchen. We had shower, cold shower, and uh, a bathroom, and we even had a little air conditioner. It was a, a nice um, economical way of uh, traveling. It was, I think, about $80 uh, a night. So uh, for 10 nights, it, it worked out really well for, for us. Uh, the only problem that we had was... Uh, at night, um, it's on the same grounds as a well-known um, backyard restaurant called Wish Willies. Uh, it's a barbecue hub every night for visitors from all over the world. Um, meals were limited um, and mostly were fresh local fish, chicken, ribs, pork chops with beans and rice. So they didn't really have a menu that you could order off of. Uh, whatever they had, you ordered. And um, there was always... Uh, people from Scandinavia somewhere. There was even some from Poland and uh, people go there and they play their instruments. Um, a very interesting um, area, but if you want a little bit of peace and quiet, um, it wasn't really exactly what we looked at. So I'm glad we didn't stay there for 21 days. We were kind of uh, checking things out. Um, I found out later in the trip that Wish Willies is another name for iguana. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Uh, one of the benefits of staying at Moe's was uh, we had access to Wish Willie's dock. And one day, the four of us took our drinks. Uh, we rented a little um, stand-up kayak and just hung out here for the day. It was really beautiful. Um, all the boats kept going by because the um, there was a fishing feeding station close by. You could hear people going, ooh, ah, ah. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later here. This is uh, Wish Willie's um, during the, the morning. Um, you can see the setup for the restaurant um, getting ready for the day. Um, there was an array of birds, hummingbirds, um, interesting sounds that were coming from um, this this huge tree that was um, kind of sheltering uh, the whole backyard, this one particular tree. And of course they have two dogs. Uh, 
pretty much I think every house on the island has dogs as protection or um, as companions. And, and we had this one, um, her name was Maisie. Um, my friend has a dog named Maisie. So it was kind of neat, uh, an, a Maisie too. And uh, most cabanas have uh, access to um, uh, these hammocks. So um, either it was me or Wilf on this hammock um, throughout the day, just kind of relaxing and chilling. Um, of course, there's great food and drinks a short distance away. Um, we had things like banana, uh, daiquiris, pineapple, coladas, um, just an amazing array of food. And they have uh, a barbecue culture on the street where you could order um, ribs and uh, fresh caught fish, right? Um, I, I don't have any pictures of that. I should. It's kind of like Jamaica. That was kind of a Jamaica a Jamaican um, feel um, with these big barrels that they cook barbecue right on the street all day. And you can smell this every time you walk by. So you're constantly buying either lobster tail or um, shrimp or different kinds of things. Of course, we had to go to the split one day and that's, um, again, here's a sign, Lazy Lizard, popular hangout for tourists and where the um, island supposedly was separated by Hurricane Hattie. Great area uh, to spend the day swimming and lounging and having a few drinks and, and uh, listening to the music. There's locals that perform there. Uh, we spent one, one particular night uh, uh, looking at the sunset from the split um, where you meet people from all over the world. Um, everybody has their bicycles and um, some people brought bottles of wine, very expensive wine, by the way, um, but people brought their own drinks and just kind of mingled and uh, just watched as the sun went down. Very beautiful. There were other very wonderful sunset spots on the island. Uh, we got to check out a few different places. We were watching the uh, TripAdvisor places. Where is the best sunsets? Uh, well, we went to the Iguana Reef, which is a fancy um, high-end hotel with a, a nice... Uh, bar um, on the sunset area. They have a seahorse nursery um, along the dock, which I never seen any seahorses, but I did see a lot of stingrays. Stingrays were quite common um, on that side of the island. They, they feed um, stingrays um, there as well. Um, we went to a place uh, called Sophie's Guest House. Um, Belinda, if you've joined me, I think that's where you guys stayed when you were in uh, um, Key Cocker, um, beautiful area. I love their little beach there. And of course, we went two nights to the Pelican Sunset Bar. Uh, the first night we went with Joe and Clark, um, but it was full. There's many people there. We couldn't get a seat. So we just walked, got a sunset picture, and then Wilf and I went back on another visit. We went about four o'clock in the afternoon so we could get a seat. Um, and um, a beautiful drinks, beautiful food, beautiful sunsets, like they, and look at how they have it set up on the beach there. People just um, visiting. We met a couple from the UK uh, that were sitting beside us and uh, uh, great conversations with people um, that were around us. Of course, uh, one of the uh, reasons we, um, we went there was to do some snorkeling. Uh, my husband loves to snorkel. Um, and we uh, booked a tour um, and a it's so close to, the reef is so close to uh, where we were, uh, 15 minutes um, on a boat. Uh, we went to three different locations. We went to Shark Ray Alley, uh, Coral Gardens, and another local site, um, Open Channel. With, and uh, one of the areas you could just walk up to your knees, and um, it was pretty amazing. So, so this area is home to the second largest barrier reef system in the world. Um, it's known as the Great Ma uh, Mayan Reef. What was amazing about our tour was um, our guide actually had a GoPro camera that um, you could um, look under the water. And this is my husband actually uh, petting a stingray. Um, this one is very tame. Um, the guide actually held it in his hands. And uh, um, I, I didn't want to try to do that. And the same, um, they um, uh, feed the sharks. Uh, they're nurse sharks, by the way. Um, and uh, so we got to see them up close as well. Uh, so, so that was kind of an interesting tour. Um, the last um, place that we went to was the Tarpoon 
um, feeding station. And you can see the size of these fish. They're probably about this large. They're probably about maybe, okay, um, uh, maybe three feet um, long. And if you hold up a sardine, um, it will actually eat it out of your hands. And uh, I, I could never get a picture. My husband, I was trying to get a picture of him feeding it, um, but it was too quick. Um, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Okay, so let's uh, move on here. Uh, some local characters. I got a kick out of this one hotel because every day I would go by, I would look at the pool and this tuxedo cat was sitting by the pool um, loving life. And my aunt Nona would appreciate this because she has a tuxedo cat and I'm sure uh, Boots would um, would be in that same category, just hanging out by the pool, um, taking in the rays, uh, maybe in, an, uh, in another life, it was probably uh, a person going to these pools. Um, this other person um, on the other side is somebody that was selling cakes um, in front of one of the, the um, uh, grocery stores. And uh, uh, there's lots of interesting people and animals that uh, you see in Belize. Um, so after our adventure to uh, snorkeling, our friends, Joanne and Clark, um, they had booked uh, uh, their second week on San Pedro Island. So we thought we would um, take a day away and check out what they're experiencing. So we took a water taxi to San Pedro, uh, met up with Joanne and Clark for an overnight, and then, um, then um, uh, we moved on to the, the mainland. So the water taxis are really easy, accessible. About every hour, you can take a water taxi um, to either Belize City or San Pedro. Um, so very, very accessible um, on these water taxis. So here again is one of those beautiful signs. Uh, we stayed uh, a night at a local spot uh, known as a Hotel Royale Blue, just off Buca de Rio Bridge and great walking along the east beach of um, San Pedro. Lots of um, birds, um, egrets, white egrets that are um, in that area. So we checked out a few bars along our walk, the Palapa Bar, Losers and Hurricanes Restaurant. Beautiful, beautiful beach. And in fact, uh, we ended up meeting up a couple that we knew from Regina, Belinda and Gladys. Uh, you can see um, the, um, uh, the visit that we had at the Palapa Bar with, um, with your sister, Twy and Pete. And um, you can go swimming if you like. This is, I think, on their first or second day arriving into Belize. And they even talked us into doing a cherry bomb challenge. Now, if you can see in the photograph in the middle, there's this big stick where they put these cherry bomb shooters and then you um, lift it up. There's a, a team of four. <laughs> and uh, so, so that was uh, fun and uh, excitement of our day. Um, we had lots of fun with um, Twyla and Pete uh, that day. We, did, we just met, we decided we'd meet them up just for the one day and um, and hopefully they, their adventures. They had a lot more adventures than us. They went on a sailboat and they toured around the islands and uh, did some fun things as well. So um, very fun day that we had with them. Um, when you compare San Pedro to um, Key Cocker, definitely, uh, San Pedro is more congested. There's lots of pedestrians, bicycles, golf carts, cars and buses going at the same time. So it's very, very busy. And you can see by these photographs that the streets are quite a bit more narrow than, um, um, than um, uh, you can see in um, Key Cocker. Also, uh, they're void of, there's, there's very little sidewalks. So you're kind of dodging between uh, different vehicles and um, and that was a little bit tricky navigating. But anyways, you wanted to stay on the beach side, right? <laughs> okay, so this is uh, walking along the beach. You can see um, there is lots of seaweed here. It's that um, uh, they're having a problem with sea gas uh, there and um, it's creating a lot of problems in the tourist industry now. Um, 
So that was a problem um, walking along the um, the beaches, but we kind of uh, avoided looking at that. We were looking more at the beautiful mural that we seen uh, looking at the history of Belize and uh, walking along the streets and finding a nice place to stop, uh, getting something to eat and drink along the way. So this was the next day. Uh, we stayed till the last ferry of the day and then headed back to um, Key Cocker. And um, we said goodbye to Joanne and Clark. This is uh, the um, sitting on the last ferry coming back from Key Cocker or uh, San Pedro, the Key Cocker, very packed. Um, we were lucky we got a seat back. I don't know what we would have done otherwise, but um, okay. So um, in Key Cocker, we said goodbye to our whole sister Maurice, AKA Wish Willies. He's original and, and he was quite a, a fantastic um, barbecue master. Uh, originally from Chicago, um, his wife is from the Netherlands and they run and operate not only the cabanas, but um, the, the restaurants. Uh, another interesting person along our journey was Juicy. Um, he's known for making fresh juices, coffees, and we got into some good island discussions and meeting people, expatriates from the United States at his little um, spot along the beach. Off to the mainland. So this is our ferry terminal. This is the water taxi. Uh, you can see boats and you can see um, golf carts waiting for um, pickup uh, of passengers uh, coming and going from San Pedro and Belize City. We ended up renting, renting a car from Crystal Rental. Um, uh, they picked us up right at the water taxi station and delivered us to the rental place and away we went. And one important thing to realize is there's no stop. Uh, we ran into one um, set of lights in Belize, and that was in um, San Ignacio. Um, otherwise, you see these bump signs, and you stop. <laughs> you don't. You don't speed up. You stop. These bump signs are there for a reason. You don't want the back or bottom end of your car to get ripped off. Uh, the other thing you see is the um, tarp. Tapar um, um, signs, They're, that's the national um, animal of Belize. And um, the bump signs you always see um, around the school zones. And you can see all the kids are wearing uniforms. Okay, so um, on day 11, that's the day we um, rented our car. We went from Belize City to Pineapple Hill. And uh, this is on the Hummingbird Highway, which was a three hour drive. And boy, what a beautiful drive. All the greenery, the, the jungles were coming up. Just an amazing uh, view. Now, when um, there was a couple stops we, we went to, we stopped at the Lamani uh, Chocolate um, um, uh, place. Uh, it's a manufacturer. He, uh, what we didn't realize was um, there's also uh, medicinal plants um, that you could buy in tea forms. Um, he also has an online store. Uh, the owner, Roger Hale, uh, is very knowledgeable about um, medicinal plants um, to take the place of pharmaceutical. He's um, fought a lot of pharm pharmaceutical companies um, in his um, um, looking at um, Mayan um, medicines, which is kind of interesting. So I, um, I really enjoyed that because I got teas, I got chocolate nibs, I got chocolate, I got a chocolate milkshake. I just overdosed on chocolate. Uh, the other place I, uh, we stopped at was a tamale shop and I absolutely adore tamales. That was before we went to um, this amazing place called the Treetop Pineapple Hill, which was a Swiss Family Robinson Jungle Oasis. Um, it is unbelievable. Uh, remind it if 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 I knew what paradise was, this would be paradise for me um, in my dreams. Um, it's the most beautiful little place um, we had uh, on the. There's a little bit of stairs involved, but um, on the main level, uh, there's a little uh, futon. Um, it has water um, and just a really peaceful environment. Going up the stairs is our little teeny weeny um, bedroom. Um, there's hummingbird feeders everywhere, hummingbirds uh, of every color description that I've never seen before in my life. Just 
a really, really amazing place. We stayed there for two nights. They have this, uh, the, um, the person that operates it um, developed this from his dreams and uh, he created this natural pool uh, using the natural stream around it, very self-sufficient. Um, so I had to go in and, and uh, swim around. It was nice and cool, refreshing. Um, the host, Stephen, created this environment for his guests to relax and watch the hummingbirds. There are three units in the jungle, um, shared kitchen, a bathroom, and great to meet others from around the world and explore local sites. We met um, a family of four from um, Baltimore, Oregon, and another couple from somewhere in Scandinavia. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really, really gorgeous. Uh, he's really done a lot of work to, to um, develop his dream. So he's got a house on the hill. Uh, he's got a plantation and uh, one of his main workers has a, a hill as well. And there's hiking trails. Um, there's national parks really close by. Just a really lovely environment. And uh, uh, he, was all, he was there at the beginning of our journey and at the end to make sure uh, we uh, were comfortable and if we had any questions about his place. Just absolutely adored it. So we moved on um, after our two days there, wish we stayed longer. Uh, St. Herman's Blue Hole National Park. Uh, it's a sapphire colored sinkhole um, in the inlands, not um, on the ocean level. Uh, nice walking trails and a variety of birds. Uh, I took a few photographs of the bird manual because I wanted to know what birds I was um, looking at. I wish I had the bird calling one because there's so many different sounds of birds um, everywhere we went and so many colors. So day 13 to 18, uh, we drove from um, uh, Pineapple Hill to San Ignacio and we spent um, seven days in our next place. Um, but before we got there, we, we wanted to de detour to a place called Spanish Outlook. Uh, this is in the Keo district, which is the area that we were traveling in. Uh, this uh, place has a population of 2,900 people. Um, it transitions from jungle to elaborate farming, which really surprised me. Um, then you started seeing grain silos, orchards, manicured lawns, and two-storied houses. This farming community is a very progressively run operation by Mennonites. And many of them come from Alberta and Saskatchewan, believe it or not. Uh, so German was sp spoke amongst them. So they're all blonde hair, blue eyed Mennonites that you've seen um, in this community. I've seen a few of them um, traveling from Calgary. So I was wondering, because they have, um, you know, their special attire they wear. Uh, so that is the, the group of people that um, where they're from. Um, they, they also speak Spanish and English as well. So um, they have sheep and cattle grazing in the farmlands along. Um, you see modern stores, banks, uh, post office, uh, hardware stores, electronic stores. Uh, we stopped at the co-op there and picked up some produce. What, what I didn't realize was this is the main hub of the dairy industry in Belize. So any um, dairy products such as cheese, milk, uh, those kinds of things are all from Spanish lookup. So San Ignacio uh, is a really interesting little town. I'm sure glad that we came here and because we, we met some um, new friends in this area. It's um, the west side of um, Keo District, 15 miles from the Guatemalan border, originally named El Keo by the Spaniards. Uh, there's 25,000 people and many people, there's many Canadian and US um, expatriates that are there. We met um, our host, where we were staying at was American. Um, they, they were friends with Canadians. So we heard some interesting stories how they actually got there. Um, another thing that um, was really amazing was the mixture of food. Because it's in a farming belt, there's lots of fresh produce and um, on good um, cattle industry. So lots of um, good food being served. Um, it sits on the bottom of a Mayan ruin known as Calpiche. Uh, they have a weekly market on Saturdays. 
the McCall River divides a city, um, and there are many adventure tours that originate here. So you can book um, tours to go um, zip lining, tubing, um, you can go into different caves, the Mayan ruins, horseback ride, there's tons of stuff uh, that originate in San Ignacio. Um, this is the place that we stayed at, the one on the left, um, just newly opened, called the Lost Compass Cabanas, and apparently we were the first to book, <laughs> so that was kind of cool. The owners um, are American couple, um, they had these two cabanas built. Uh, the only drawback is uh, I thought I could walk through um, down the hill and go to Calpiche, but no, it, it's all jungle <laughs> and there's snakes and all different kinds of things, predators in that area. So I wouldn't want to do that. So I had to go around and I, I did a little bit of exploring. Um, um, the, the road to get up there is a little bit on the bumpy side in the residential area, um, but really a lovely, quiet, peaceful area that we stayed. And they're just starting to grow. Um, some things in their area around their property. Just new, new, new. Beautifully designed, using local woods and artists to, um, uh, to uh, create a really um, strong Belizean presence. Uh, there was a gas stove, microwave, brand new um, uh, fridge, everything that you need to set up and stay there for a while. Uh, we needed our cat fix. So cat, the neighbor would come over and visit every day, pretty much when he, when he seen us coming, he'd be a Renan, <laughs> cute little kitty. Okay, a peaceful hillside area, sounds of birds, wildlife, even um, seeing a family of gim gibnets, which are like little guinea pigs. Uh, we toured the Awa um, chocolate factory, uh, we made chocolate. Uh, we went to um, the Oxmall Coffee Plantation. Um, interesting story. The host, James, is a multi-generational multi Mayan farmer. Um, the first successful um, coffee plantation in Belize. He shared his story about making coffee. Belize isn't known for its coffee. It's Mexico and all the countries around, but Belize um, he was told he no you can't you can't uh, grow coffee here he he did and uh, now he's starting to uh, give tours and sell his coffee uh, the name of the coffee um, uh, that he has um, given it um, Oxmal is the original Mayan name uh, for the community when the Spaniards came they uh, changed it to San Antonio and um, uh, they even built a church on top of the Mayan temple site so they were experiencing the same kind of uh, problems that we have in Canada with the Indigenous people. We toured the Mountain Ridge uh, Forest Reserve. I'm not going to go into the details but we toured uh, the Rio Freeze Cave. Um, it's the largest cave in Belize. Uh, our, um, our host, our, our guide, um, took some fantastic pictures like that is an amazing picture I'm in the background you can't see me but um, you can see my husband it looks like a beach on the inside of this cage it's huge then we went to the Rio pool um, there's all these different layers of uh, swimming holes different um, um, comfort levels of swimming and splashing around uh, the second picture is Wolf and I on, underneath uh, the falls in the one area and our third stop was Big Rock Falls um, 150 foot waterfall, just an amazing area. Moose Jaw Connection. Uh, Wilf uh, knew a fellow by the name of Raymond Gamble and um, um, through a mutual friend realized that him and his wife moved to Belize. They bought a property and are living there. So we contacted them by, uh, through Facebook and connected and had an amazing time with them. And in fact, um, um, uh, Raymond's aunt was visiting from Moose Jaw. So we did a bunch of touring around. We went to the coffee tour, Calpiche, we went to the farmer's market shopping. So they were very um, gracious in, in um, hosting a barbecue. And they even showed us a toucan on their property. Um, so we knew they were around, but they're very shy. And um, Shannon ran out on the road and said, hey, there's a toucan. So we got to see our first toucan out in the wilderness. So that was an amazing part of our trip that we didn't know was going to happen. So they're going to come back to Musha this summer and hopefully we can connect. Uh, so Calpiche, how, what time are we at there? 
1242. Okay, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> um, so anybody that wants to join me again, maybe we can offer a second part uh, looking at the ruins of Belize. What do you think? Okay.